Hello friends, my name is Amanda May and this is my channel Artith Design where we celebrate counted cross stitch, sustainable stitching, and making all the things. If you are new to my channel, welcome. And if you're returning, thank you so much for coming back to talk all things needlework with me this week. Ah, so exciting. I celebrated my 2000 subscribers a couple weeks ago and I'm at 2100 as of filming today, which is uh, Tuesday. So I'm so excited. Thank you all so much. I say it all the time and I'll keep saying it. Cross Stitch has truly saved my life, enriched my life, and Floss Tube has added so much to my life. And thank you all so much for tuning in. This week, I wanna show you the projects that I've been stitching on. I started two brand new projects. And then just some other ones that I've shown in previous videos that I've been working along on. I have a couple new projects that I started including a quilt because hashtag make all the things. I also have some happy meal to show you. I got two packages this week of stitchy kindness. Oh my gosh, amazing. So I would like to show you that and it's cross stitch needlework related, I promise. And then at the end, I'll wrap up with my personal stuff if you want to hang out and hear all about Amanda May. <laughs> Crossing my fingers that the kids and the pugs don't come in and bug us as we talk about needlework. I'm so excited. I will say that for next week, I'm crossing my fingers that I will be able to film, but we are getting our HVAC replaced or our heat pump, cooling pump. I don't know what they're... I grew up in California where we didn't have seasons and then I move out here to Maryland and we have four seasons. I don't know how to handle it. Anyway, it they say it's going to be a huge job and they have to replace all of our duct work and it's a whole big hot mess. So while I'm a hot mess now, I'll probably be cooler in a couple weeks. <laughs> so, <laughs> I may or may not have a video next week we'll see. So let's make the most of our time together right now. All right. Should we start with my new starts? Yes. I'll start with my first new start for Christmas in July or Kissmas in July. Jolly July, all the good things. There's so many good hashtags out there. People working on Christmas projects in July. I wanted to put on one of my ugly Christmas sweaters, but ha! <laughs> No. <laughs> so I started the By the Bay Needle Arts and this is a cute little joy stitch and it came with everything, the fabric and the embellishments and the pattern. Um, no floss but and the beads and I'm so excited. So it was like a little treat when I opened it up and realized oh my gosh there's fabric. So it this it came with the coffee stained fabric and I got the joy stitched on uh, here. And then so I just need to add this and the goodies. And then it even came with the felt, the finishing felt. I didn't realize that. This was a gift from Karen. Thank you so much, Karen. I love it. It's been a fun little stitch. I have been able to work on this outside because it's super small. I stitch in hand. And so the kids are on the obstacle course and I can kind of whip up a frenzy here. I started using the old tattered flag and it's called the grungy red so I started using this floss I reached out to Julie who is the owner of the old tattered flag and she was telling me that they're super busy but they have thread packs available uh, but she is not she doesn't do wholesale so because I was like hmm I wonder if I can spread the love <laughs> But not, uh, unfortunately, I just get to enjoy it for myself. Oh, shucks. But <laughs> I know some of you have ordered from her. Uh, and I'll, I'll put her website down below. I'm not affiliated with her. Just fangirled her, you know. Anywho. Oh, before. I, <laughs> I have a stack of stuff on top of before I can show you my other whips. So I need to, I need to show you something. All right. So the quilt here. I wanted to show you that I arrange a lot of my stuff using these vintage piece. They're 
like men's trousers where you hang and it it opens like this I started collecting these several years ago I like to hang my skirts and you know even though I never wear skirts but apparently I need them in my closet <laughs> uh, and I started collecting these and then I started using them to hang my textiles and stuff and I know that some other cross stitchers also use them so if you see these at antique stores or thrift stores and you want to pick them up they're really super cool I wanted to show you so I have these this hanging here in my studio these are all the my stuff that I need to finish I have my latest which is the the dream I have the here lie my needles so what I do is I iron, I press them, and then I hang them on this. I don't have a project roll. I've been thinking about that. Uh, this is Blessings Be Thine by Blackbird Designs. I finished this, and I love this piece. I need to get it framed. And then I have another Blackbird. I wanted to have this up for summertime, so maybe this will be the kick in the pants I need. This is my Yellow Submarine. I'm working on strawberry fields forever which I do have to show you this I is so, so cute and then I have a couple other ones that were part of my save the stitches this is a lavender and lace y'all told me let me know who that was and then this was a piece I took out of the frame and washed it it's like an old JMP coats it's from 1995 I did not stitch it I love this though. It's got the little cuckoo clock. I don't know if any of you watch Brenda and the Serial Starter. Their last video, they got Stitchy Kindness from Ellen Reed of Maximum Cross Stitch Power Hour. And Ellen Reed stitched one over one, meaning one thread over one linen strand. So it's teeny tiny little cuckoo clock. And I'm like, I need one of those in my life. I've always wanted a cuckoo clock. And even like um, Disney Channel, Disney Junior. <laughs> Excuse me, I'm getting so excited. I'm starting coughing. Disney Junior has a show called Puppy Dog Pals. And there's an, a whole episode on cuckoo clocks. It's so cute. The puppies go to Germany to find the cuckoo bird. And so then my kids ask about cuckoo clocks and they say they want a cuckoo clock. So I feel like... I need to have one in my life. So I'm sending it out into the universe. <laughs> mm. I think it's super cute. I was, I was thinking about adding this into a wall hanging. And then this piece, I, I talked about it a couple weeks ago and then I'm like, where did I put it? I felt so disheveled. This was a piece that I got and it was, they were going to throw it away, but I, I, I bought it. It was like in the 75% off like clearance. Anyway, I pulled it apart and it did have the rust on the Ada fabric around and I, some of you might think it's controversial but it had it said thank you teacher like 1987 or 1989 it was very personalized I did go ahead and take that part out just leaving the sampler itself I I want to turn this into a project bag and add some blue fabric and do something with it so you won't see the the rust marks on this. So I wanted to show you that I do hang projects like this. The quilt I started making here, my son, he's three, loves to quilt. He loves to make little blocks. So we've been making little blocks, no rhyme or reason, and we're going to piece them together to this that we've already worked on. This is all one week's worth of work. I would say with my son helping, we put in about 20 hours on this and I, I'm, I'm really happy with it. And the cool thing is I had a lot of this fabric, uh, like the bird and these quilt squares. I If you'd watched one of my videos a couple years ago now, a year and a half ago, I talked about those pink squares that I'd got, but then I also got this at Patches Quilting. These two are new fabrics that I got, but then all of this extra fabric I got from a quilter. She is on Instagram and she was saying last month, she put out, she's like, hey, 
I have all this fabric that I literally cannot deal with. Like I have more projects, you know, the Sable stash, ac stash acquisition about, um, beyond life expectancy. And I've admired her quilts and her work forever. I'll, I'll have a link. I'll, I'll do her Instagram handle down below. I don't know her personally, but I fangirled her an instant or messaged her and said, Hey, I just saw your post that you are saying you'll put all your, she had like bins of fabric scraps, as many fabric scraps as she could fit into a large flat rate on like box. And she would send it to you for free. You just had to pay for postage, postage, $21 and something, something. So I messaged her in a fury <laughs> and said, Oh my gosh, yes, please. So she PayPal invoiced me, sent me the fabric. I got this beautiful fabric scrap. So all of this green and teal and blue and most of the whites, all of that is from the scraps that she sent me. And so I was able to integrate some of my bigger quilt pieces, like my bigger fabrics that are mine with scraps in the same kind of color palette. And then my son is having so much fun. We're doing like the tessellation and geometry. And obviously we're not following a pattern, <laughs> but it's been so much fun. So I, I digress from my whips to talk about the quilting, but here we go. Let's go back to cross stitch in my happy rainbow bag. I love these vinyl bags. I'm a visual learner and I realized that putting stuff in vinyl is the best for me visually so I can see and remember what I am stitching. So I am, it's a project out of the current issue of Just Cross Stitch Magazine. It's the August issue. I still haven't started the other two projects I said I was going to. I know, I know. And <laughs> their Halloween issue is coming out. I am not in it, but I'm excited to see all the projects that are in it. And congratulations to all of the cross stitchers in the community who are featured in the Halloween issue. Amazing. So this is the project I'm working on right now. It is so, so cute. And it's got the birds and the nautical, the lighthouse, all the good things. I fell in love with it because it has the blue crab and then it has a seahorse and then the fish. And I love seahorses, love seahorses. Uh, that was one of my favorite exhibits to go to at the Monterey Bay Aquarium growing up. Every year we'd go on a field trip and to see the little seahorses and then obviously the sea otters <laughs> and then the kelp forest exhibit. But I digress. The seahorses are so cute. I am stitching this using a combination of Victorian Motto Sampler Shop. And then I have all the limited edition. I, I did her Patriotic Box last year by Color and Cotton. So she's like Betsy Floss. And I'm just kind of picking the colors as I go and adding them to. I'm just using a rigid, the magazine clip for this. And it's, it's good. I'm just, I'm just going to just work in, work in. I added this section here of the waves, the blue, and then the bottom of the ship. So the, I need to start adding the mast and these, I loved, it's got like a cute little polka dot and stripe look to it. And I'm all about the polka dots. I think they're just so fun. Anything with polka dots. I got some polka dots going here and more polkas. What is, what's that? I can't resist a good polka. <laughs> I can't remember what that movie, what movie that's from. If you, if you know, let me know. <laughs> all right. So I, this, though, the fabric is 36 count, the smoke blue Edinburgh linen, smoky blue. I like my blues smoky. <sighs> so much smoke going on. People here in Maryland, people can um, burn in their yards. Lots of smoke going on. <laughs> people building barns, burning fires, all the things. The next project I have been working on is in my wonky project bag that I made. And this is the Strawberry Fields Forever. 
I'm using all the called for colors. They're all G Gentle Art and Weeks Dye Works flosses. And I will say that I like Baked Apple, but my favorite color in this is the Redwood. The Country Redwood is my jam. So I'm super happy with this. I want to get this done. I want it done. I am stitching this on a 37 count. This is the first project ever that I've stitched on a 37. Not a 38 and not a 36, but a 37. And I'm using one strand of floss. So I feel, I feel, it's, it's cool to not have a project that, eats up a lot of floss. I, I have, I, I actually have some floss probably left over for another project after this. So all I did was I came down with the border and then right as I was about to get to the gate, the garden gate, I made a big mistake right here with the green. So I've got to rip this out so I can make sure I can move forward on getting I just have my working copy stuff. So I came right down here, made a mistake right here, but I want to get to the gate. I got upset. So I came up here and I start, I'm starting to work down on this floral motif. I'm hoping that everything lines up. So I got, I got the green here. I will say that this is not my favorite, this yellow here. I think it's called picnic basket and it's not my favorite, but I am doing the called for colors. I am embracing things. Things are different. I am challenging myself as a stitcher to stitch different things by different designers because I feel like it keeps me learning and growing and trying new things. And it's, it's fun. If people, you know, d designers have different color palettes, whether or not you want to use their suggested colors or not is another thing. So it's, it's good. It's good. I just want to, can you tell I'm antsy and my pantsy? I just want to have it done. Okay. I worked on the, its name is a mystery sow slash onward noble steed stitch along, um, put out by Lindy stitches. I have it in my bag that I made with the fabric. This lace is, was sent to me by Diana of It Is Kismet Stitches. I will have her channel linked below. She is awesome. I integrated a lot of things into this piece. I will say that this was a great, this was a great project for me in that it reconfirmed that I am not a fan of stitch alongs and that's okay. When I first started cross stitching, I was, it was uh, almost five years ago now. The very first project I ever stitched was just like a little heart thing. And then I got a library book and, and started stitching a camera. Well, the first thing that I like committed, bought the fabric, the thread pack, the pattern, the needle minder, the thread organizer. I mean, I was all in was from the frosted pumpkin stitchery and it was one of their mystery stitch alongs featuring the sloth was like the first it was into the jungle and it was the very first one and I was like yes that's awesome I I still have not started that project I got like it was anxiety inducing not knowing what the next month held or what it was going to look like or what am I investing my time in and I don't know how it's going to look. I have, I have now realized that it is not cool with my, my personality does not work well with <laughs> like, there's so much stuff that that stitching is the last thing that should be giving me anxiety. But I wanted to do this Sal, you know, hashtag diversity and inclusion Sal, diversity matters, I is for intersectionality, all the things. So I really wanted to do this um, and I was trying to guess like what the animal was going to be and here she is. I made a mistake with her hair so she's got longer hair. I I, I did some thread converting stuff. Um, it was a silks for you purple from Trish of three of uh, Trish from Threads and Twined. 
Then I started adding some, this is variegated. This was sent to me by Allie, the blue. I started adding this in and I, I just, all the good things, right? Well, the, the final, the final week was to reveal what the animal was going to be. And my guess, I was hoping that it was going to be a dragon or like the Loch Ness monster. And so in my mind, I had already committed that she was going to be riding the Loch Ness monster. Why the Loch Ness? I don't know. I probably just because I wanted to put her in a, in a lake with the, the water flowing, you know? So when it came out and it wasn't those two things, I'm like, oh, shucks. Well, I guess I'm just going to have to start stitching her anyway. So I started working on, as charted, um, stitching it with the grungy green from Old Tattered Flag. And I was working on it, working on it. And then it was like not sitting right with me because what was charted originally, um, it just didn't, it didn't sit right, which is fine. So I decided to, I didn't rip out any stitches. I had started kind of here and then I pulled out and I started charting and I went ahead and charted out a stylized version of the Loch Ness Monster. I put in the that blue variegated with, and then I'm debating about, because I have enough fabric here. This was gifted to me. Uh, I have enough fabric. I thought about adding another lump here and another for the Loch Ness, because there's like multiple, the body, and then I ran out of green. <laughs> so if I order more thread, do I do that or just call it a day and leave her there? This is not charted or endorsed by Lindy Stitches. This is my own uh, variation on it. I was going to put a wand in her hand. like, And then I thought flowers. I saw Amy Loves Toads. She put a daisy flower, like a bouquet of flowers in the hand. And I thought that was really cool. So I don't know how I want to finish this or add more water. I just, I don't know what to do. I stitched it all. This is a 32 count fabric using the two strands. There is the called for the white and the, and the, her skin color, everything except the purple here is called for. And then I'm debating if I'm gonna add the stirrups that's charted. I did not stitch Onward Noble Steed and that wasn't a, a lack of liking it. It was just, I skipped week two. I just didn't stitch the words. So I was behind. Again, anxiety inducing and that's okay. I am excited. I, I broke some rules. I didn't do it as charted. But it was fun, nevertheless, to do week one with everyone. It, I, that was really cool. And it's fun to hear people guess. I know Autumn Lane Stitchery in combination with Under the Sea Fabrics are doing a 12-month, like, Queen of the Sea or Queen of the Depths stitch along. And I, I cannot wait to watch people, like, sit with my popcorn and scroll through Netflix and watch and see what transpires and watch each month all of the, the surprise stuff that comes out. It's it's so fun to watch the stitch alongs. I just, I no longer will be participating. <laughs> so there we go. And then my last project is a new project that I started. I put it in my first ever project bag that I ever created when I cut up an old shirt that didn't fit me, that I, no, it did fit me, but I had a stain on it. <sighs> stain. So <laughs> uh, I decided to work on a project that I had been wanting to, out of the Home for the Holidays book. Uh, it, the Cardinal, ah, I'm so excited. This piece got a lot of love and attention 2017, 18, 19. I know Misty Purcell of Luminous Fiber Arts. She did a beautiful, she dyed her own fabric and did a beautiful finish. I know Donna Ray from Flannel Jammies Farm did this stitch, finished it. So many wonderful stitchers across the globe have stitched this. And I had stitch envy. So I have this book 
and I stitched, I showed you the blessings be thine. That stitch was out of this book. And then I'm like, I have to start the cardinal. And I am going to, I want to stitch it as it's charted with the French below. But I might get impatient and I might just stitch the bird and stop it here and not add the rest of the floral and stuff. So we'll see what I end up doing. I thought about using the exact same threads that I did for Blessings Be Thine, which was um, Monkey Grass and Cayenne Weeks Dye Works, but I decided not to. And <laughs> I pulled out this piece of fabric. It was also gifted to me by Karen. Thank you, Karen. And it is a polka dot fabric and she sent me a big piece but uh again anxiety I didn't want to cut it yet because I'm so afraid of making a mistake so here's the piece of fabric <laughs> and I left myself a nice margin I'm trying to see if it tells me what fabric this is yes this is the Zweigart Belfast linen 32 count and it's the dot and this has, um, it's like a screen printed dot. So you do need to be cognizant that as you are stitching, you will, your needle, you're going to be going over those screen printed dots that have the ink. So it's not a flat. Uh, so you have to be mindful of, of going over that. This is my first ever screen printed fabric. And it is so far, it's been really good. I'm really excited, but I will say, that I am using the Pat Carson size 26 needle on this 32 count fabric and it's gliding through the those the screen printed things. I really like the Pat's favorite needle. I oh my gosh, they're my favorite needles. They're expensive though. And I am obviously I'm not a needle aficionado. <laughs> I had some people ask me about different companies like I've never tried their needles <laughs> I don't know so <laughs> but so far I'm really enjoying this I decided to go my own way with colors and that isn't I I just wanted to use what I had <laughs> so the the beak of the bird the orange I am using the sunburst from the old tattered flag. Then the brown is the rust brown by the same company for the foliage there, the, the brown. And then the leaves, I am doing the charted, as charted called for green there, but this green is a silk and it is as you can see, it's the only one I've used so far. These other ones are so pretty and perfect. It is this green here, and it's number 212, and it's really pretty. So how I take this off the skein is there's like a little knot. So I didn't clip anything. There's a little knot how they fold it or how they twist it in. And I just carefully undid the knot and got it all un undone in order to grab what I needed. I won these from the Just Cross Stitch 2019 ornament contest. This was part of my winnings. And I am happy a year later to finally use them. I, you know, when things you, things look so nice, you don't want to touch them. Like they're you don't like they're precious and you just want to like look at them and not use them well that's how I felt about the silks and quite frankly I felt a little scared about silks but I am getting over my fear I am learning it and I'm loving it I love the feel the texture of the silks I will say my hand I mean you, my dry hands so I do know that the the textile, the, the tactile difference is different between cotton and silk, but I am enjoying it. I don't know if I'll enjoy it over the winter time with really dry hands. So I thought Christmas in July, silks, let's do it. Also, I had to pay taxes on my prize package. So it's not like it was, <laughs> like I paid 
for, I paid for them. I might as well use them. I am feisty today. Excuse me. It's, it's the heat. I'm telling you, it's the heat. <laughs> so those are the projects that I have been working on this week. The two starts and then the two that I had not worked on that I wanted to, which was the Wish Upon a Star is still in my queue, as well as the Autumn Lane Stitchery Little Snowman. Both of them are in my queue because I don't have enough things to do in my life. All right. Let's talk about the giveaway. Ah! All right. I am going to go ahead and extend it one more week. I had 55 entries so far. I am keeping track. This week's question, if you want to be entered into my giveaway, is what is your favorite summertime snack? This could be sweet, savory. This could just be crushed ice. I mean, some people love just crushed ice water. So tell me what your favorite thing, your favorite summertime snack is. And then if you're in the, if you're in Australia, if you're down on the other hemisphere, tell me what your favorite snack is for this time of year. Cause I know seasons are flipped. Uh, the giveaway includes my book, Stitching Love and Kindness. You all are so sweet about this. I had so much fun creating this book. This is the colonial knot pattern featured. And this heart is from, uh, was created by it at Not Forgotten Farm. So you can get, you can get the finishing components. And the button here is from, um, she's French. I'll, why is her name escaping me? Oh, I have all the resources in the back of the book. I promise. It is the resources. All the things. Yes, yeah, Soft Porcelain Linen by Limonous Fiber Arts, the Ultra Punch Needle, the B Button Company, Wooden Heart Buttons. Yes. <laughs> so I, there's the Love Kindness Empathy Sampler. There is the little, the cutie little gnome punch needle if you like punch needle. Here. And just all the things. So <laughs> Tell me your summertime snack. You get the book and my two patterns. You get saltwater taffy terry, destination North Pole Earth, a handmade card of my some of my tomatoes from my tomato collection, and then the Victorian motto sampler threads. Um, some of the threads called for for saltwater taffy terry, including pretty orange and banana pants yellow, and then the shades of violet. And then two spools of the new Sulky 12 weight acrylic thread. I did a review slash tutorial because I wanted to <laughs> uh, for the Sulky thread. Um, I just really wanted to try it out and I am not disappointed. It's really cool. So I have, I, I have some projects that I have been working on with the acrylic thread. If you are into like machine embroidery or machine quilting, um, it can mimic the faux fur. So that's really cool. So there's just so much, there's just so many cool things out there in the world. I'm like now I feel like my new <laughs> phrase should be try all the things. All right. Happy mail. Happy mail. I, uh, I didn't know either one of these packages were coming. I didn't. All right, so the first one is from Norma. Thank you, Norma. She sent me a beautiful note, just a gorgeous, thoughtful note. And then she sent stickers for my babies. They love stickers. The problem, though, with stickers and young children are the stickers inevitably either stick to the clothes and you wash them and then you got the gooey residue, or the stickers wind up on the floor and then you're like, you gotta go when you gotta scrape those stickers off before you mop the floor. Either way, I, it doesn't matter. I love stickers. It's my, always my favorite aisle to go down in the craft section. When I was really little, I didn't know why people bought like floral arrangements and like the beautiful decorative picks that all the beautiful cross stitch finishes are finished on, right? Like why would you buy fake flowers when you can buy stickers? And now I'm, you know, in my 30s, I'm like, I want the floral arranging stuff and I still want the stickers. <laughs> so Norma sent me some cute little 
things. Um, this is from 1987 needle form. So some cute little patterns here. This one, I actually think I have what this in my collection. I and mean, if it's not Carol, it's another one of the Jan stockings. It's really cute. I like the little baby doll on that stocking. Then the paper lace, this is really cool. I know that Piecework Magazine for their Valentine's Day issue had a perforated paper Valentine article with some patterns and the discussion of utilizing perforated paper for your sentiments. Not only economical, but also gorgeous. And then because I need more hobbies and I need to learn more things, she sent me the old fashioned ribbon art. Yes, please. I want to learn all the ribbon art. <laughs> I love ribbon. I think I have a problem with ribbon and buttons. I think so. And then she sent me the 1994 American Country Christmas book. I started flipping through this with the kids and then their, their attention span is, you know, two and a half minutes. So I need to finish looking through this, but there was a really cute twig frame that I, you know, where they, maybe we can go and gather the twigs and then make the little frame and then put the art in. So thank you so much, Norma. That was so lovely to get. And again, it's just so, so wonderful. Uh, all the stickers. I promise I won't hoard the stickers. I promise I will, the kids will use them. <laughs> all right. The next piece of happy meal I got was from my friend Grace over in West Virginia. Hi Grace. Grace knows my soft spot and she sent me all the goodies. She said, you know, the theme was, this was going to get thrown away. Apparently in some areas of West Virginia, they, they don't have, you're responsible for your own garbage disposal like you have to physically take your stuff to the landfill to the dump so she was saying that she took this so that it didn't go to the dumps it like anyway so she sent me some vintage these were at the dump is what I'm trying to say <laughs> she just rescued them as I love to rescue all the things you know if you've been out with me for a while you know that I love to rescue all the things Titan Needlecraft really cute like the greeting card and then look at this little reindeer kit. How cute is that? So I'm just gonna throw this away. Look at this little Santa. I love his little face. Look at him. Isn't he so cute? I love it. And then they even have um, like the metallic threads. Christmas greetings contains the Ada cloth, embroidery floss, the, the embossed card, everything to finish it. She sent me a good piece of, you know, the Charles Craft 14 count Ada. These are perfect. If you're at a thrift store and you see these and they're 10 cents, 25 cents, pick them up. These are perfect if you want to, number one, start cross stitching. Number two, you want to practice your fabric dyeing. Number three, you want to stitch on something that's just, it's, you're not out a whole lot of financially you're not out a whole lot of money so this is not my favorite color it's 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 more yellow than it's showing up right now but this is a great little piece of fabric to practice your writ dye or your over dyeing or I know someone has suggested to me that I give my kids uh, uh, markers and have them draw directly on the Ada and then I stitch over that so just something to think about these, I, I used to find these Charles Craft all the time, just out and about. They're not, you know, Charles Craft is not terribly expensive now. It was purchased, the company was bought out by DMC. So a lot of the big box stores carry the 14 count Ada, the DMC Charles Craft. So this is the older, like from the eighties. So just, just something to think about. And then look at her, oh my gosh. She, I think she's my favorite. She's got kind of like a cheeky little look and she's <laughs> so cute. I, she's got her little white hair and then plastic canvas. Cause everybody needs a plastic canvas tote. 
Show me your plastic canvas project bags, people. I know, I know y'all want that one. I like that one. And then because, look at this, so cute. It is the something special, the little teddy bear hoops. It looks like the pattern is not here. Um, like someone has finished, finished the project and everything, but it's got the hoops. Again, another thing that you can do, repurpose, reuse. These hoops, you can stick your own little project and then you'll cut out a piece of mat board or acid-free uh, paper, um, acid-free sticky board. You cut to size. If you don't like it in green, you can use you can use the spray paint that I think Rust-Oleum has a spray paint specifically designed for plastic, like for the outdoor plastic play equipment, but it can double as like spray painting your plastic, you know, instead of over dyeing your fabric, you're over painting your plastic, right? So, I mean, you could spray these gold, silver, hot pink, and then put a fun little stitch inside of it. So that's just, again, something to think about with your embroidery hoops. So this was really great. Fun little things that she sent me, which I appreciate so much. Thank you, Grace. I wanted to, oh, I wanted to show you this one little kit that she sent too. And is this the one? Painted wood shapes. It's got the, the Ada needs to be washed. The kit was opened. You know, you open, we open kits. We have the, we have the best of intentions on starting it. And then we never do. Um, but <laughs> it came with the little, little embellishments and then the little hoopty hoop again. This is that plastic that's made to mimic wood spray paint it. Wouldn't this look cute if you did uh, a Christmas, like if you like the crash, the nativities, you know, something in one of these little frames, that would be really darling. I also know like the stiatch along, they take the, <laughs> these and then put uh, subversive or uh, unconventional uh, words or stuff on the bottom if you like that type of thing, like, you know, if you like the, <laughs> You know what I mean, right? <laughs> so this is really cool. I wanted to have a talk about rusty needles and now I can't find the rusty needle, which I feel like that's not a good thing. So I know it's one of these in here. I wanna show you. I have learned that a lot of you are brand new to cross stitching and which is so awesome that you found my channel and that you're into cross stitch because it's amazing. But there's some things that I have learned that I am guilty. I'm still have the bad habit of, but I wanted to show you. So it was this, this chart, it was, there's a rusty needle, many kits, eighties, nineties, and even some today, they assemble the kits and they put the needle right into the fabric. Well, over time, moisture, all the things, it causes your needle to rust. Number one, a safety hazard. Number two, it ruins your needle. Number three, it ruins your fabric because now you have rust staining. So this is just a, hey, friendly FYI, I have to remind myself, don't leave your needle in your fabric <laughs> because it could rust. So that is my PSA for this episode. Oh my gosh, I'm... I think I've got all my goodies talked about. I jumped around. I forgot about my quilt stuff and I ended up talking about that first. But if you are all done with me this week and don't want to hear about my personal stuff, I will say ta-ta, bye-bye. And if you want to stick around, I just, just for a few minutes want to tell you about my life. <sighs> okay. Y'all. It looks like I'm gonna homeschool. I've been doing a lot of research and learning a lot about homeschooling. I did not anticipate uh, being a homeschool parent, but given the state of current events, it is what is going to happen. It, 
this happened <laughs> even more so because my the county that I live in they said hey if you're if your child is going to physically attend our school make sure and you're trying to register for school just email the principal and then you click the link to email the principal and there's no email and then it takes you back to the Department of Maryland website and then it takes you and everything circles they don't actually want you to contact them <laughs> Like, oh, okay, so we're not doing distance learning because you won't even let my child enroll in school. Okay, so it looks like I am going to be homeschooling. And in my do all the things, <laughs> it looks like I'm going to be adding that to it. I already do, I, I mean, I'm already teaching and doing and, you know, we do a lot of reading and art and you know physical education but now it's going to be form like I'm I gotta like write stuff down and do lesson plans and plan curriculum and send in forms and all the things so that's what's going on with me <laughs> I also I'm gonna have my air conditioner replaced I know I mentioned that earlier <laughs> but I'm gonna say it again I am working on charting some designs um, for magazine submissions. And you, know, you just gotta keep sending stuff in and keep putting, your, keep putting yourself out there because you never know what's gonna happen. And Wayne Gretzky said, you know, you miss 100% of the shots that you do not take. And just know that rejection is par for the course and you just pick yourself up and you try again, uh, willing, you know, given if you can, if you can. And so I am going to be submitting some more proposals and crossing my fingers. I have model stitching to do. I still have stuff to chart and get out into the universe. And I'm going to be on a homeschooling adventure. <laughs> <laughs> my pugs are doing well. My family is doing well. I'm stress eating and cross stitching. <laughs> All right. Thank you for hanging out with me this week. I hope you know that I truly appreciate you. I cannot stress this enough. Okay. Well, I might be feisty and a little warm over here. Just know <laughs> that. I love you and please know that you matter, your stitching matters, and I cannot wait to talk to you soon. Again, if you want to enter my giveaway below, favorite summertime snack, you can enter more than once. So if you entered for last week, you can enter again this week. I'll write your name down twice, but you got to be a subscriber. You've got to be 18 or over. Don't say giveaway. Don't say free. All the typical blast tube rules. Also, I'm not shipping overseas. I'm sorry. All of you internationally around the world, thank you. I love you. The Postal Service does not. So just uh, 50, 50 states and U.S. territories only. Okay. Uh, happy stitching.